In today's video, I explain how to determine your calorie needs for your goals. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and in today's video we're going to break down how do you determine how many calories you actually need based on your body and your goals and I'm also going to give you an example at the end of a macronutrient breakdown based on those calorie needs so you can kind of get started with this whole thing. So where this comes from is my Instagram. So on my Instagram I got a direct message. I also got a message on Facebook asking me a very similar question so I thought Now's a good time that we can talk about calorie needs. How do we determine them? And I think that a lot of the confusion comes from the fact that we don't actually know how to get our caloric needs. So we go to these online calculators, plug in our stats, our age, our gender, our sex, our training, our activity levels, all these things, and it punches out a number. And some people will start consuming calories based on that number. They'll actually see the scale go up. They won't see any change at all and they they get kind of frustrated. So I want to determine, I want to help you determine what those numbers should actually be. So the way to best get your metabolic rate is to get it tested in a metabolic cart. Now, for those that don't have access to this, I'll explain it here. Maybe I'll show you what it looks like, but basically you lay down in a machine and you breathe for 20 minutes and it determines based on your breathing, how many calories you would burn in a given day. So this is a very, very accurate representation, obviously, because it's actually measuring the energy. Now to have this test done, you have to be in a fasted state for 12 hours and you also have to not train the day prior and then you have to come in early in the morning while fasted without having any activity and just slide in there. No caffeine, no nothing. You got to get in that test. Now, the reason they want that is because they don't want things that kind of alter our metabolic rate, our resting heart rate, those kind of things and give us false readings. So beyond that, how can we determine what our metabolic rate is and what makes up how many calories we'll burn? Well, the first thing is our basal metabolic rate. This is the amount of calories that we need to kind of keep the lights on, just to keep going on a day-to-day -day basis. The next thing would be our activity level. How active are we? Are we completely sedentary? Do we just roll out of bed to the couch, roll to the car, to the office, roll to the desk, to home? Or are we getting up before work, going for a walk, coming on, on our lunch breaks, taking a walk, going to the gym after work? Are we very active? Are we playing in sports? Like these are lifestyles that will have di very different needs, calorically speaking. And another major one is the thermic effect of food. So when we consume food, our body has to break it down to use it for energy, okay? It's not a 100% uh, ratio. We actually use about 10% of the calories that we, that we get from food to break down food, okay? So that thermic effect of food will also impact our metabolic rate, which is why I had to be fasted when I took my test. So how can we determine this if we do not have a machine that we can sit in and breathe or a lab that we can go to and get our metabolism tested. Well, the best way in my opinion is not to use these online calculators, but instead is to find a app or a website that you really like and just track what you eat for an entire week. Just plug it in. Okay, there's some great free resources out there where you can literally just take the food you eat, plug it in. Things have gotten so much easier now. There's actually almost all major restaurants are in these apps. Everything that you can think of as far as recipes go, they're gonna be in there. And how does this help? Well, a lot of it just becomes down to we don't feel comfortable or we feel like it's gonna take a lot of time. But what I found is that we tend to eat a lot of the same foods over and over again. So once you plug them into these devices, these apps, these websites, well, you just repeat your eating habits over and over. So once we get an accurate representation of how many calories you're taking in on a daily basis, assuming that your weight is stable, well, we then we'll kind of have a baseline. So let's take somebody and assume that they weigh 150 pounds and they find out that they average about 2000 calories a day. How would I set up their macronutrient ratios and how would I set up their numbers for a fat loss goal? Well, someone that weighs 150 pounds and is in pretty decent shape, we're not gonna say that they're obese, I would set their protein at around a gram per pound, okay? So 150 grams of protein. That's gonna take up 600 of our 2,000 calories. The next thing I would determine would be fat intake. For fat intake, I would want roughly 25% of the calories to come from fat. The goal there is to make sure that we're hormonally safe, digestion is good. Fat intake is also very helpful when it comes to food selection. When you start eliminating fat, it can be very tough to find some food choices. So 
Now that we know we want 25% of our calories to come from fat, which is 500, that's around 55 grams of fat. So now we're at 150 protein and 55 fat. Now the remaining 900 calories that we have are gonna be used up with carbohydrates. That will be 225 grams of carbohydrates. There you go, there's our maintenance macros. So how would we set up a fat loss phase? Well, I would start with using carbohydrates as the primary calorie thing to pull from because with, with protein, I'm gonna keep it pretty stable. With fat, I'm gonna keep it pretty stable. With carbohydrates, we'll make a pretty nice drop. So for this person, I would have them at 150 protein, drop fats slightly to say 50, and then bring carbohydrates down to say 170, right? Making the largest adjustment from carbohydrates. Now, if this person has a fat loss goal, I'd also ask them to increase their activity level, be moving more. Whether that means you're going to the gym and doing exercise, you sign up for a Zumba class, maybe you're doing yoga a couple times a week, because the only way that we can lose weight is when we create a caloric deficit. Now, a lot of times I hear people say, well, what about fasting? Fasting is great because oh, the whole time I'm fasting, I am burning more fat. Well, that is correct, but the problem is, is when you are taking in a lot more calories in a short window, well, you're gonna store more body fat. So the 24 hour net balance is the same. So there's no magic behind the idea of fasting. What it helps with is adherence for some people. So I'm all for finding an approach that works for you, but there is no magic approach. Keto is not magic, fasting is not magic, okay? These are just approaches to take to nutrition that might work for someone's lifestyle, okay? And by eliminating an approach, eliminating a variable, it might really work for you. So definitely experiment with different approaches, but find the one that you're able to consistently use. That's gonna be the one that works the best. All right guys, hopefully this helps in determining your calorie needs and how to create a caloric deficit for your goals. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.